Hi everyone, number one Marmaduke fan here, and this is one of those things where I woke up at 3 a.m. and thought about this and went back to sleep, and then when I woke up the next morning, it actually I, don't, I actually think this wasn't that dumb an idea. So this is something I've been thinking about for a while. I, I sincerely doubt I'm the only person to have thought of this, but I think I have a nice, simple illustration for the importance of free speech and the problem with hate speech. Uh, regulation. So I've read lots of, you know, great free speech advocates making like really solid arguments to defend the importance of free speech. It, it, and it usually boils down to, uh, even if I hate what you have to say, I defend your right to say it because free speech doesn't just affect the little group we're talking about. It affects everyone. And that's a great argument. What I like about this is this is maybe like a thought experiment you could pull someone into hopefully to demonstrate why that might actually be the case. Now, a good thought experiment, I think, it's not just supposed to be like uh, a Tom Preston, uh, straw man style comic strip where the point is just to bash someone over the head. A good thought experiment is supposed to give you like a few things to mull over and then you kind of like jump into the thought experiment and play with it. And maybe you jump in as yourself or maybe you jump in as a character who will return to those guys later. And it, uh, really, it ought to like, make you think and maybe challenge, uh, challenge some of your previously held beliefs. Like maybe your instinct, what you feel at your gut level, is different than what you conclude by trying to think through the thought experiment. So what, have I got, what I've got up here is the left-right paradigm. If you're on the left side of the aisle, you're a political leftist. If you're right side of the aisle, you're a political rightist. And that's way too, way too simple. It's not, it's, it doesn't work for what we need to do. So what I've come up with here is a chart of four possibilities. Uh, and the, the reason I've written A's and B's here is like in symbolic logic, you should be able to plug in almost any controversial issue into this. So this is A is true and B is true. A is true and B is false. A is false and B is true. A is false and B is false. Now, that's great for symbolic logic, but that gets too complicated to like hold on to. So let's let's pick a hot button, controversial, culture war issue. How about the Bible and gay marriage? Oh, I can hear the comment section lighting up already. All right, so we've got to fit the controversial issue of the Bible and gay marriage into this. So what would A is true and B is true B? Well, that would be conservative Christians, people who uh, accept the Bible as authoritative, they accept it as the Word of God, and they believe that there is a clear traditional teaching that the Bible forbids gay marriage. All right, what would the, what would the next one be? Well, that would be a non-Christian, uh, or, or maybe even like, yeah, it, 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 this has to be like someone who rejects the Bible as God's Word, but they believe there is clearly, obviously, a teaching in the Bible that says no gay marriage. So both of these boxes, what their answer to the question, does the Bible forbid gay marriage? They both say, yes, of course, obviously. All right, now what about the bottom two boxes? Well, down here, we might have kind of like a the gay Christian movement, rainbow Christianity. So uh, they would propose that we believe the Bible, we are Christians, we believe it's the Word of God, but we believe that the Bible allows for same-sex marriage. So I'm going to put SSM here to indicate that. And then what else would we got? Well, we'd have atheists, uh, maybe like the Young Turks, for example, who they, they reject the Bible, they reject Christianity, but they say, you know, the Bible doesn't forbid gay marriage because listen to those guys, right? So. The importance of this is this is illustrating how uh, it, this is showing why left-right, you know, for gay marriage, against gay marriage, that's way too simple. And this is a simplification, right? Like, there could be any number of person in this box. This could be like a hardcore atheist who's arguing against Christians. This could be someone who just doesn't care about the religious topics whatsoever. They're just like a history nerd. This box, this could have like your Stephen Andersons who are bigots who will you know, say awful things like he thinks that gay people deserve to die, awful people like that. But you could also put a lot of people who are just sort of like your standard Christian into this box, right? Like people who argue against Steve Anderson and say he's full of it. The Bible 
Uh, the Bible doesn't teach that gay people should just die. They, ju they just hold to the position that the Bible forbids gay marriage, right? So even though this is still hyper simple, I think this is enough to perform our thought experiment and show what will happen if we try to regulate hate speech in this box. So uh, which of these boxes would be the target of regulations for hate speech? Well, I think it'd clearly be this one. Why? Because, well, they're teaching something that targets a minority group. The, the idea is that by teaching that the Bible forbids gay marriage, they are targeting a protected minority group. This is hate speech. We need to regulate them. Well, how are we going to regulate them? Well, that depends who you are. So first up, we've got uh, Rush Revere here, the time-traveling American constitutional enthusiast. So what, is, what does Rush Revere do? Let's see, he comes in here. Oh, that's right. He's a free speech absolutist. So there's absolutely no problem here. You think that, you think that, whatever, have fun, argue it out. You're all adults. All right. So, hey, th thought experiment over. R Rush Revere, the free speech absolutist, that, that's it. No regulation. All right. Well, next we've got, uh, oh, hi, Joseph Stalin. Okay. So what's, what's Joseph Stalin's solution to this problem of eliminating hate speech? Well, if you want to eliminate hate speech, we should just kill everyone here. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. Why are you talking about gay marriage? The only thing I want you talking about is how wonderful my five-year plan is for the great so Soviet Russia. So Stalin's solution, kill everyone. Hate speech is gone. Well, uh, these social media platforms, YouTube, Twitter, Google, Facebook, they're not, they're not quite sure they want to go the Joseph Stalin route, but they really want to, really want to take care of hate speech. So uh, all four of these have come up with what they think is a compromise. And their compromise is, we love free speech, but hate speech is unacceptable. All right, so. What, what will happen when we try to enforce the, the compromise position between free speech absolutism and totalitarianism uh, on, onto the public d discourse? We love free speech, but we have to prevent hate speech. Well, one way you could do it is you could target groups. So you could say, this is the group that's a problem. We're going to punish them. We're going to take their video down. We're going to ban their Twitter account. We'll shadow ban them. Well, the problem is... What, what if this person says something bigoted? What if, what if this person slips and says something else bigoted? So you need more than just like fixating on one group. You need a rule that you could apply to all four of these groups to prevent any of the four of them from engaging in hate speech. Now, push aside all like the problems of like, how's a robot supposed to know how to do that? How's an algorithm supposed to know how to do that? How are they supposed to be able to recognize context and recognize intent? You know, all these human things that robots and algorithms don't understand. Let's, sh let's shove that aside. We're going to focus on intention. All right, so we can't just pick on this one group. We need some rule to prevent hate speech from occurring. Well, now here's the problem. Which idea do you target to stop the hate speech? So let's say that you say the problem we need to target is people advocating that the Bible historically preaches against gay marriage. Well, that would encompass this atheist here. Now, this atheist could be, this could be a gay person, this could be a lesbian person. They're just like a nerd in their room reading like all of these ancient books about, you know, ancient Greece and ancient Israel. And they conclude, yeah, yeah, the, the, I, I, I reject Christianity, but I have no problem saying Christianity and ancient Greece, uh, they would hold all of these bigoted views, right? So if you try to restrict people from saying these ancient sources teach Christianity, you target this person. Well, we don't want to do that. Okay, well, maybe what we should do is we should restrict people from teaching that these books are a source of inspiration, that these are the one and only word of God, that these are like exclusive truth. Well, now you're going to like target these guys down here. Because wait a second, if they say that, if they say that Christianity is true, and then people also hear that, well, then they might come to that, they might come to that conclusion. So the problem I'm trying to illustrate is that anytime you try to go after this group, the different premises that they have, they're not just a map of blob of people, they have different premises which lead them to this conclusion. So which premise do you have to go after? The, the religious one or the historical one? Uh, so in re one of the things that prompted this is I noticed that a few years ago, there was like a purge on YouTube of any 
like major Christian video, like from a big end, like from a big Christian uh, mission or parachurch ministry that had any kind of like tag or thing in the title with like LGBT in the title. If it was relevant to any of those issues, it was gone. Now, one possibility is that you know our our, our wonderful overlords of Google, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. They watched every single one of these videos. They concluded that. In their original context, all of these constituted hate speech, and they got it 100% right. They, uh, without without harming anyone's free speech, they only got rid of the hate speech. But what what next? What do you have to do next? Uh, what happens if the Christians then say, "Okay, we can't talk about gay marriage on our YouTube channel. We can't talk about transgender issues on our Twitter. Let's just talk about Christianity generally, and we'll avoid discussing." gay marriage. Well, are you going to get it? What, what if they talk about, what if they start quoting this guy? If you're a Christian, you quote this guy. Does that mean that you're taking this idea over to here and putting them together into the hate speech? Uh-oh. Uh, well, what if, uh, gosh, what if someone starts quoting these guys and even, even, and then they realize, oh, wait a second, if I believe this stuff, but I also believe this stuff, that would lead me to this stuff. So do we have to stop both of these guys from talking? So I think that we're 11 minutes. That's the thought experiment. Your problem is if you initially say, we're going to target this, we're going to stop the hate speech here. You inevitably have the problem of I'll, I'll, it, as long as these people exist, and as long as these people exist, you're always going to be able to put those two, someone's going to be able to put those two ideas together and get this back. Now, if you are a uh, Freedom guy, who cares? People can say whatever want they want, they can do whatever they want. I'm not gonna regulate that. It's none of my it's none of my business. But if your goal is we need to get rid of the hate speech, you, you, you're gonna be forced into one of two positions. Either you're gonna be forced into a position where, okay, a little hate speech will have to exist. There's no way to expunge all the hate speech, even if you ban these guys. Both both ideas still exist on the board. This idea still exists somewhere on the board. This idea still exists somewhere on the board. So we've banned them, we've stopped them, we've removed their hate speech, but all of the ideas necessary to recreate this movement exist. If your goal is stamp out the hate speech, if your argument is hate speech is anything that can lead to a hateful opinion, then things which have nothing to do with that, like the atheist saying the Bible teaches preaches against gay marriage, that could lead to hate speech. That could lead to hateful beliefs. The person who says they are for gay marriage, but teaching that they believe in the Bible, well, think about it. It's a historically oppressive religion. That could lead to oppressive beliefs. It's historically had oppressive beliefs. So if your goal is stop hate speech, this is never enough. You have to stretch outwards. You have to continue finding things which may have had nothing to do with the original hate speech and get those. If your goal is maybe stop hate speech, but kind of st leave it after we just get the, the worst offenders, then then it's, then it's an endless fight because the, the ideas will still always exist to create the what, what you've identified as the hateful idea. That's it. Okay, I don't need to repeat it because I think that's made the point. So uh, why don't you try playing around with this, with this thought experiment a bit? Plug in a different issue. Uh, plug in a different politician or idea. But uh, my purpose in doing this is, I think, this, this isn't as simple as I thought it was going to be, but I think it does show a significant problem you have if, theoretically, you want to destroy all the hate speech. So, to, if you don't like the Stalin approach of killing everybody, uh, well, you, maybe you could go like the social media approach, but you're never going to stamp out the, ha the hate speech as effectively as good old Stalin. Or you go the free speech absolutist approach and just say, have it out, have fun, you're adults. Settle this, settle this. You guys figure this out. But it's not my job to decide which of you gets to talk and which ideas you get to discuss in which context. So, yay number one. With that, I'm number one Marmaduke fan. I love you guys. Uh, thank you to all of my subscribers. Thank you to everyone who subscribed to me on Subscribestar. I'll link to that in the description below. If you like this channel, check out my Subscribestar. Use my referral link to sign up if you're interested in it. And uh, everyone who supports me on Subscribestar will be thanked at the end of every video. With that, I'll catch you later.